Hello everyone, and thank you for watching the previous program entitled Silent Messengers. Now, we'd like to welcome you to today's program, also organized by the canvassing department of the General Conference. Before we go into this program, which by the way, is very, very vital for us, we'd like to prepare our hearts with a wonderful musical item performed by the Renovason group of our conference here in Northern California. Enjoy it.
Let us now take a few moments to invite the presence of the Lord in our midst. Join me in an opening prayer. Our merciful Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence to thank you for allowing us to spend time with your word. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us up to this moment. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, we have the assurance that uh, whenever we gather together, you will be in our midst. And based on this promise of yours, we come to you to ask you to prepare our hearts for the hearing of your word. Prepare our minds and help us, Father, that we may be able to grasp the meaning of the words that you are going to share with us. We are praying also for the speaker, that you would bless him so he would be able to share with us the things that you want us to learn. Be with us and help us to acknowledge, not just to feel, but to acknowledge your presence in our midst. All this we ask in the precious name of Christ. Amen. Today's speaker is Pastor Mario Linares. He is the director of the canvassing department for the General Conference. The topic that he is going to dwell on is messengers of health. In these times in which we live, this message is of vital importance. Let us pay close attention to what the Lord has for us through Pastor Linares. Dear brethren, it is with great pleasure and happiness to have with us Pastor Mario Linares, who is the representative of canvassing and evangelism from the GC. And in this morning, he will present to us a topic of a great importance, which is messengers of health. May this message fill our minds with him the opportunity. Amen. May the grace and peace of God be with all of our brethren in this Sabbath morning. Messengers of health. Our Master and Savior, Jesus, the Bible says that he went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Christ's method involved three dimensions, the teaching, the preaching, and the cure or the treatment. These three dimensions Jesus used in, in order to reach the soul of humanity. And the spirit of prophecy says that within this work of bringing the gospel to the world, Jesus would do more cures than he would preach. In other words, he would pay attention to the necessities of the soul, the pain, the suffering, which everyone would feel and would claim for some sort of help. In Christian Services, page 133, it says, Christ, the great medical missionary, is our example. He healed the sick and preached the gospel. In his service, healing and teaching were linked closely together. Today, they are not to be separated. Interesting, the method of Christ. He used the teaching and the treatment. Those two aspects were always united. 
in his work of sharing the gospel to the world. And it says here that they cannot be separated, not even today. The messages of salvation and the messages of health. I remember that a few years ago, a sister sought us, asking us if we could follow her to make a visit to uh, a madam that was a doctor, actually, a nephrologist, that was with some serious uh, health issues. And obviously, I was a bit worried because, in all fairness, we are not professionals from the medical area. But thinking that perhaps we could offer at least some counsels, we went with this sister and we visited this uh, doctor. And when we arrived to her house, we realized that she was in a really delicate situation. Beside her serious problems with diabetes and with the blood circulation, she also had some serious issues with her legs, something called erysipelas. And she was uh, in a clinic for quite a while at that time, and the doctor asked her to, to remain for another six months. And this, this woman, she was already taking about 12 types of medication a day. And because of that, she couldn't sleep, she couldn't rest very well during the night, and her legs would swallow and would sweat. And when we arrived and talked to her, she confessed to us that she was tired of living and that she was thinking already that the death would be much better to her in this situation. And we proposed to her that if she would be willing, we could do some natural treatments for her if she would accept. She said, look, Please do, do whatever you think, whatever you find as, as fit, because I'm tired of all this. So we, are, we propose to start uh, at the very beginning of that week. And she, with the little, with the little willingness that she had left in herself, she uh, showed herself willing to undergo this treatment. And it was actually her husband that was helping us uh, with all these treatments. And we started praying to God, what kind of treatments could we, could we do for her? And we looked in the manuals and the books of health and treatments that we have, and we looked for treatments for erysipelas, and we found their treatments with cabbage, with vapor, with fruits, with alimentation, and we started doing according to what was written in our books. Dear brethren, with all certainty, God acted in the restoring of this woman. And at the end of 30 days, the wounds that were all over her legs and her feet already became like some really small wounds. And after another 30 days, she was almost entirely healed. And she said to us, Mario, how much do I owe to you for the treatments that you have provided me with? And I said, Doctor, in my church, my brethren, uh, they are basically the ones that sustain me so that I can do this work. And if you would like to show your gratitude towards them for sustaining me and for allowing me to be able to do, undergo this, this uh, activity, then you could do it to the church. And the next Sabbath, she went to the church with her entire family, and she publicly um, thanked everyone uh, and God, especially for, for the healing that she received. A wonderful experience, because we saw the hand of God 
to the medical treatments, not only to restore her health, but only to touch, but also to touch the heart of the entire family. We saw that the messages of health are tools in order to touch the hearts of the people and attract them to the feet of the cross, to the feet of Jesus. Of course, not everyone, not everyone that is healed accepts immediately God. We saw in the experience of the 10 uh, men that were with leper, we saw that the, the 10 of them went to have with Jesus and they said, Christ, have, be merciful of us. And Christ said to them, go and show yourselves to the, to the priests, to the Pharisees. And on their way, they became healed. And what happened? When they felt healed, only one of them came back to Jesus in order to thank him and glorified God for this miracle that he had done. And falling at his feet with, with a face in the ground, he was giving thanks to God. But this was a Sam Samaritan. And Jesus answering, answering said, Were there not the ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said to him, Arouse, go, arise and go your way. And although the, all the ten of them were healed, only one came back, and this was a Samaritan. In another event, in the Old Testament, we find the story of a Syrian general. He, wa he was also suffering of leprosy. And we know by the story that uh, a little girl that, was, that has been taken captive and was working in the house of this general, seeing the pain and the suffering that he was going through, although him being a general and well-respected and well-considered in his country, and she said to her mistress, would God, my Lord, were with a prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. I imagine that the wife went to Naaman and insisted with him. And after he realized that there was no other option in his own country, he asked the king to allow him to go to Israel to see, to see if he could find a cure or a solution for, her pro for his problem. And after the recommendation of the king, he went to Israel. And there he met with the king of Israel, which didn't give him too much hope. But then a messenger told him, uh, there is a prophet in the Israel. And he was guided to, to Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and your flesh shall come again to you, and you shall be clean. Naaman was a general, a proud, and, and he said, look, but in my country, there, must, uh, there are so many better rivers than here. Why should I dive seven times into this Jordan? And the servants said to him, my, my lord, if, if the prophet would have asked something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? And Naaman said, no, I thought that he would come out, he would, he would put his hand on, on my wounds and I would be healed. But he asked me to, to dive into this river seven times. I don't know if this river is so clean. But the servants insisted with them, with him to, to dive as the prophet has said. And finally, he accepted and he, he entered into the river and 
He did it the seven times and nothing happened. But the prophet said seven times, and the seventh time when he went out of the water, his skin went back to be a clean skin as that of a child. And then he recognized the power, not the power of Elisha, but the power of God. And he says in 2 Kings, And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray you, take a blessing of your servant. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray you, be given to your servant two mules burden of earth? For your servant will from now on offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Dear brethren, what Bible study did Naaman receive to, to accept Christ? Naaman accepted the God of Israel. Why? Because his health was restored. He was cured from a very serious illness. An illness that was known to be as incurable, but which God, through his servant, had performed this miracle. Thus, impressed, he took the, des the resolution, the decision, that from there on, he would serve God and God alone. He even, he even asked that some, some soil from Israel would be brought with him so that in his own, back in his country he could serve God. How many people are there in the church that were touched in the same manner as Naaman was, who after having passed through suffering, through pain, because of diseases, illnesses, they found a comfort through the instructions of health which our books bring along. Or perhaps some health counsel through the natural treatments, through the methods, and thus their heart was open to understand other truths. And today, they are here with us, participating in our church and as members of our church. And I have the utmost certainty that as Naaman, there are many others in this world waiting a message of health. And this message would open their heart to understand and accept the message of salvation. Sister White says, in the spirit of prophecy, that the canvasser should be able to give instruction in regard to the treatment of the sick. They should learn the simple methods of hygienic, hygienic treatment. How important is it that we may know, that we may get to understand and be able to teach to others the treatments of health. We know that the natural remedies are God's pharmacy. And if we were to counsel with faith and humbleness, and the ones that would receive these counsels would practice it, God can perform a miracle in the restoring of their health. Still in the spirit of prophecy says, canvassers should bring the health publications to the notice of those they visit, telling them how useful they are in the treatment of disease. You see, our publication, our, our literature are messengers of health that find their way into, into homes, and in their given time, they do their work. We still find written that the circulation of our health publications is the most important work 
It is a work in which all who believe in the special truths for this time should have a living interest. Why, why do these health publication, publications? We find the answer in another part that says that our health literature is the helping hand of the gospel opening the way for the truth to enter and save many souls. And pay attention how, the, how Sister White highlights these aspects. She says, I know of nothing which so quickly unlocks hearts as this literature, which, when read and practiced, leads souls to the searching of the Bible for a better understanding of the truth. I find it very interesting. Sister Wise says, I know of nothing else that unlocks hearts so fast or so quick as this literature, which is this health literature, that when read and practiced leads souls to the searching of the Bible for a better understanding of the truth. In all fairness, in reality, our literature, they work as a gate. They open the gate, in, actually, so that other truths may enter. We find, still in the spirit of prophecy, that says much of the preju prejudice that prevents the truth of the third angel's message from reaching the hearts of the people might be removed if more attention were given to health reform. When people become interested in this subject, the way is often prepared for the entrance of other Truths. If they see that we are intelligent with regard to health, they will be more ready to believe that we are sound in Bible doctrine. This is wonderful. I remember of the experience of another lady. Her name is Maria Angelica. And this uh, madam entered in contact with one of our uh, br brethren. Um, and he was the owner of a restaurant and giving um, some, some speeches on health. Some, and uh, this, this madam came came to, to this um, brother uh, seeking some comfort, seeking some help. And since I was around the area, I offered um, ourselves to, to visit her, and she very willingly accepted, and we started some, some studies in her home. When we reached her home, we saw her library, and there we could see our health books. And I asked her, and I actually told her, look, these books, for how long do you have them? She said, look, these are my favorite books. I already, I have them for several years here. And uh, just besides these books, I could see the great controversy. Next to these other books. And I asked her as well, and this other book, did you read this as well? She said, Oh, look, I, I did already try to, to read this one as well, but I couldn't understand much. And she was profoundly uh, moved or impressed when we told her that these books, these health books, and this um, spiritual book, was published actually by our church. She was very happy with it. And after a few months of study, studying the Word of God, she accepted the invitation to come to our church and she started attending. And we had the, the great happiness, the great joy of performing her baptism. We see that, we see that once more, the health books 
are being the messengers that open the gate towards other truths. We find in the spirit of prophecy, true religion and the laws of health go hand in hand. It is impossible to work for the salvation of men and women without presenting to them the need of breaking away from sinful gratification, which destroy the heart, the health, debase the soul and prevent divine truth from impressing the mind. We see thus that the true religion and the health laws, they go hand in hand, they go together. We cannot separate them, the message of salvation from the message of health, and the message of health from the message of salvation. Let's read the Bible verse in Psalm 103 with verse 2 and 3. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. We see here the two aspects, the forgiveness of sins and the restoring of the health. We see how both are closely united. The canvassers, they should work as evangelists, scattering our publications, talking of the truth to those they meet, praying for the sick, and if need be, treating them, not with drugs, but with nature's remedies, ever realizing their dependence on God. As they unite in the work of teaching and healing, they will reap a rich harvest of souls. A wonderful work. Canvassers are also called to perform this work, this medical missionary work. Christ is just as willing to heal the sick now as when he was personally on earth. Christ's servants are his representatives, the channels for his working. He desires through them to exercise his healing power. See how wonderful that today we may as well use these means which God has left, with, left us with, the ministry of healing through natural um, treatments. And God will perform the miracles when his name is being glorified. He will restore the people, and he will call their attention to even greater truths. I wish to tell you that soon there will be no work done in ministerial lines but medical missionary work. Dear brethren, this message is quite solemn and it gives us an advert, a warning, because many of us won't have this freedom of continuing in their works, in their jobs, but we will have still the opportunity of continuing in, within the, uh, this area of medical missionary work, not just to alleviate the suffering of the humanity, but also to show the way or, or prepare the people towards repentance. We see that this work is closely united with the work of canvassing. And the prophecies, which, which the Bible left us with, left to all of us that are involved in the work of canvassing, we find it saying, as long as probation continues, there will be opportunity for the canvasser to work. Until in heaven is spoken the word, it is finished. 
There will always be places for labor and hearts to receive the message. Dear brother, dear sister, dear young man, young woman, the plan of God to his church, the plan of God towards you and towards me, he provided this wonderful work, this wonderful ministry of canvassing so that he may reach many souls. It has been used for the resurrection and the revival of our church. It is being used and it will continue being used until the end of time. As long as in heaven is spoken the word, it is finished. There will always be places for labor. If the, the gates would, be, would start closing in one place, we could move to another place. And thus we will follow his example, Jesus' example, who would go from village to village, from city to city, preaching the gospel of the, gospel, uh, of the kingdom. I want to tell you this morning that I hope that you will receive and accept this message in your heart and that God may help you understand the calling or God's calling for you and join the army of messengers that are sharing this message of hope, this message of help, and this message of salvation towards all of them that are desiring and willing to receive and know God as their saviors. May God bless you this morning and use you for the glory and honor of his name. It is the wish and my prayer. Amen. Thank you for watching this wonderful message. It is almost redundant to say why this message is important. We live in a world that is being tried and is suffering with all kinds of diseases. We, the people of God, need to be messengers of health. And at the closing of this program, we would like you to sit down and enjoy another musical item, also performed by the Renovason Group here in Northern California Conference. Enjoy it.
Hi, my name is Jennifer, and I'm here to invite you to the Georgia Canvassing Project of 2021. This project is centered around helping people find hope by bringing truth to their doorstep. Our mission is to reach the communities in Georgia and to pursue a deep relationship with Jesus together. When I think about how canvassing has impacted my life, I immediately think about the very first time I went canvassing. I had never done it before, and it was quite an experience. I learned so much. From that experience, a desire was created in my heart to share Christ with others. To be honest, before the first time I went canvassing, I didn't really care to share Christ with others. However, after this experience, I had a desire like never before to share the good news of salvation with our sin-sick world. So if you're unsure about coming to this project or feel scared, don't be. It's worth all the time and money in the world. You won't regret coming, I can promise you that. The Georgia Project will be taking place on June 6th through the 27th, and we are inviting you to attend. However, due to COVID safety regulations, we have a limited number of people who can come. So make sure to fill out your application today. God bless, and I hope to see you in Georgia. After hearing this beautiful musical item, we would like to invite each of you to join us in a closing prayer. Pastor Linares is going to lead us to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we are infinitely thankful and grateful to you for having revealed to us this wonderful truth that brings us to the knowledge of your word and to the acceptance of you as our personal Savior. We would like to implore you, Lord, that you may continue using your church and impressing upon the mind of everyone listening, that we may put ourselves at your disposal, that we may be used as messengers, messengers of hope, messengers of health, messengers of salvation for so many in this world that are about to perish, that are waiting only a message that may help them in the restoring of their health and spiritual health as well. Please prepare us that your work may be as soon as possible accomplished. In your hands do we surrender this morning and we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, thank you everybody for being with us during this program. And I have some more good news for you. This program does not end here and now. It will continue on Sabbath at 4 p.m., where you and I will have the privilege to hear some missionary experiences that will be shared by Brother Daniel Balbeck, who is the director of the missionary department for Western United States Union. See you there.